Well, welcome fellow travelers. Your traveling buddy here coming to you today from Lansing, Michigan. And I'm here at our famous cemetery here called Mount Hope Cemetery today for a special event. Uh, a while back I did a video about the uh, training school that used to be here in Lansing. And a bunch of boys that passed away, you know, while they were there. And they had great, uh, they were buried right here in the cemetery. They didn't have any gravestones. Well, this group called the Lan Lansing's Historical uh, Friends of Historical Cemeteries right here in Lansing, Michigan, they raised money to get these boys some tombstones. Well, today, they are going to dedicate, uh, actually give them their tombstones and have a big dedication. So I come out here and show this. So travel with me, will you? idea. She thought some 20 years ago that this needed to be done and sometimes things take their own sweet time in working through a cycle until things fall into place for it to happen. But Nancy was the instigator initially of this whole concept. And Jeff Davis couldn't be with us today but he is with Greater Lansing Monument. They donated a portion of the cost of these markers so that we could do it at a more reasonable price. Brett Kaczynski, Director of City Parks and Recreation, has been very helpful and collaborative with us as we work through the process of getting this accomplished. And we also have with us Irene from the City Forestry Department, Irene Cahill. And Angel Garcia from the City Parks and Rec Department, who has done a lot of this work, and his wife. Also, we have with us the family of Richard McKinney, the one boy out of the 61 buried here who did have a marker to begin with, Michelle Pohl and her family with her. <clears throat> Today we gather to dedicate as many as 163 years after the first death, grave markers for 60 boys who died in custody of the state of Michigan between 1856 and 1933. Some were <clears throat> incarcerated for serious crimes, some for stealing a small quantity of food, some because they were orphans, <clears throat> some because their parents could not care for them. And on this day, we will recognize their lives and their deaths by marking their graves with their individual names, restoring to them an identity withheld all these many years. said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. 
going in the uh, Psalm 23, please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to let some of our speakers talk for a few minutes about their involvement in this project and what it has meant to them. And we'll begin with Nancy Melo. Well, as Loretta said, um, this project, it wasn't just me. There were many, many, many individuals that, that made this project happen. Um, the donations that we, we received, um, uh, the Parks Department uh, putting, helping to put this all together, the Monument Place. Um, there's just so many to thank that we would be here all day. Um, about 18 years ago, like Loretta said, I started this journey of because they couldn't afford health insurance. They couldn't afford medical care for them. And they knew that they could get some kind of care at, at the facility. Uh, since I started this project, I spoke to many individuals who either worked at the school, um, one of our uh, a great neighborhood uh, person, uh, I was hoping he could come today, but he's 93 years old and he's living in an assisted living facility. He was a superintendent at the school. And it was good listening to the stories that he told. Um, a really good friend of mine, I learned that his dad taught Sunday school. Uh, my mother and father-in-law worked in the office at the school and my, my uh, husband uh, would be, get dropped off after school to go to go home after their shift. We are, to give, we are here to give each their identity and lay them to rest peacefully. Thank you to the Richard McKimmy family for never forgetting him and continuing to share their love. To these boys, may God be with each of you and you finally can rest in peace, knowing that there are many, there are many out here who care for you. Thank you. Brett Kaczynski, Parks Rec Director.
So I think uh, we have many uses for stone. And I thought about that today, you know, as I come in and I look at the crack on my windshield from the stone. And then I come here to the cemetery and I see stones and how they are used in a, in a obviously, a much different way. And I thought about the history of that a little bit, uh, and you really can't do a history of stone. But in terms of memorials and markers, and you look back to when Joshua uh, and the Israelites left their land, and they brought a stone to remember each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And you look around here in this historic cemetery, and you see stones for sparrow, you see stones for owls, uh, you see stones for pruden, and Ranny, and Potter, and, and many others. And yet here were 61 young people that really didn't have a stone. And so we are here today to complete that because once again, each should be memory. Whether they are big names in Lansing's history, or whether they are part of Lansing's history in some other way, we are here to do that. And obviously, this is a place of many stones. And so um, I'd like to thank our staff for all of their work that they do in this cemetery each and every day around these stones and around this history here. And we're just glad to be a part of it and uh, are thankful for this day finally coming around. Family of Richard McKinney. Um, 20 years ago, I was doing my genealogy research with my grandmother who was in the nursing home. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, she finally shared the story of my grandpa's brother. Um, it was a kept secret for many years. Um, he was not a bad child. They could not care for him, so that is why he went to the school for the boys. Um, after I'm covering that, I reached out to my entire family, which um, my, grandfather, my grandfather had 10 kids. So I reached out to every one of those and all my cousins to donate money so that we could do what my grandpa always wanted to do, is put a stone on his brother. So we got enough money, and 20 years ago, we put that on there for my grandfather. And coming up here today and seeing all these other markers are just amazing. I'm so ecstatic that all of the work that these guys did to get all these boys recognized. They've done an amazing job, and now, we look here and this is not an empty lot anymore. This is something that's going to be remembered forever. For our group, for the Friends of Lansing's Historic Cemeteries, this project began in April when we held a Doggy Easter Parade costume contest with the idea that it would be a fundraiser kickoff event for what we expected to be several fundraisers over several years in order to accomplish this goal. When it was uh, publicized, we were astounded at the response from the public. This, this project really touched people. It touched their hearts. It resonated in such a phenomenal way with so many people that in 10 weeks, we raised the $21,000 that it took to do this project. Some of those donations were as small as $10 or $15, others were as large as $10,000. Uh, we are just astonished and, and very proud to be here today to finally say to these boys, your time has come. Today is the day. You are remembered and recognized. At this time, um, we were going to unveil the markers, but the wind had other ideas and kept pulling our unveiling devices off of the markers. So we will move on to the reading aloud of the names, beginning with Jenny Russell. Robert S. Sutton, Aura Woodbury, Frank Foyer, Leonard Barnett, Lindell Stewart, Walter Brewer, John F. Walden, Frank Huntington, Edward C. Van Horgis, Willie Goheen, Bozing Becare, Herman Green, Richard McKinney, Hilary Ivory, Frank Anderson, Elijah Lathrop, John C. Garrow, James Crawley, George H. Fletcher, Richard Trotter.
This is Diane Clark, our Vice President of our group. Andrew Kirkwood, John H. Sprague, William Campbell, David Hector, Louis Ogden, John Pierce, Junior Campbell, David Cook, Frank Freed, William Kellogg, Henry Garrett, Thomas Cox, John Washington, Charles Almy, Archibald Boyce, Sylvester Curtis, Herman Nash, John Hunt, and William Bruce. And Nancy Malo will read the next 20 names. Uh, you should mention, as a way of information, the Monument Company got a little behind schedule due to a problem we had with the state archives releasing some of the information that was necessary to do the marker engravings, which is why there are 15 markers in the ground and the others are marked with uh, templates of what the markers will look like. Thanks, Loretta. Before I read their names, I want to let you know uh, the youngest one here is uh, Junior Campo. I thought I was going to have a hard time finding any information on him because of his name of Junior, but had no problem whatsoever. He was four foot six inches tall, had light complexion, brown hair, and brown eyes. The oldest was 18, and he died before he aged out of the facility. The names are John Williams, William Simmons, James Robinson, William Marion, Albert Benjamin, Daniel Henson, Arthur Haviland, Andrew Bell, Irving Hines, Franklin Tucker, Charles Bassett, Edward Randolph, Charles Mason, John Stanton, William Rice, William Hounson, James Addison Jones, Horace Anderson, Freddie Messler, Stanley Seisel, and Lawrence Janik. I dedicate these great markers to the memory of each of these names spoken aloud here today. The final injustice of an unmarked grave is at last put to rest this day. May this bring closure and healing to all those in need. Please pray with me. God of the living and the dead, Help us to honor the life and hope and courage of each of these, your children. We dedicate these markers to their memories. We honor their short lives as we tell and retell their stories in our families and communities. These markers are a sign of remembrance, but we dedicate them also as a sign of hope. Let them be a sign of your grace to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, if there's anyone from the public who would like to make a comment, this is your opportunity to do so. You may either just speak from where you're at, or if you'd like to come and speak from the microphone, you're welcome to do so. Is there anyone who would like to comment? Thank you for all of Thank you for your dedication. Our privilege. Okay, then Nancy will lead in the prayer of thanksgiving. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these grave markers are now consecrated to, the, to be a sign of our mortality and our sure and certain hope of resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write this, from now on, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They have rest from their labors. And if you'll give me a moment to find it on my phone, I will play a YouTube that will lead us in singing on eagle's wings.
concludes our service today. We thank you each for being here. You're welcome to stay and have refreshments, mingle, to talk, to look at the names in the graves, and to realize that for very many, many, many years, as many as 163 years, this was a bare site that had no acknowledgement at all that there was anyone buried here, let alone 61 precious souls who no longer are forgotten. She brought a notebook here, so all the information and all that about the school, because that was the school right there. Yep. The memory book. Yeah. So there's all the stories. See, there's some of the boys right there. Not the ones that's buried here, I don't think. But. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
Uh, had a band there. Sorry, I'm trying to turn the pages. There's a bunch of the boys in this class. There's some more. There's some of the training they did. They learned to cook. But I put, I did a whole video all about it. Twelve scissors, like all kinds of trades that he learned. <laughs> and all that. But they tried to do well for him. But unfortunately, some of them didn't make it. And you know, imagine the times. Medical. That's why some, they said some of the people gave up their kids. Well, there's a big picture of the school. Look at that. Grounds. So the only thing that's left is the actual, it's like an auditorium in Eastern High School for that football team. They use it as their basketball in their stadium. And they just moved Eastern now and they're going to be tearing down Eastern now. Might stop by there on the way back and show you the grounds where the school used to sit. See, there's the field house. That's the one I was talking about. That's the field house, and it's still there. And they use it. That's the only thing left of the school. All right, I'm here with Loretta Stanway. This is the president of the Lansing's. Friends of Historical Cemeteries. The Friends of Lansing Friends, Historic right. Cemeteries. I always get that wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, but and she's a godsend. I, I'm, you know, I'm glad we got able to get this going. And yeah, you got any more big projects coming up? Uh, Our annual fall walking tour is on Sunday, September 29th at three o'clock, and the theme is murder, mystery, and mayhem. And then we have our annual 5K run walk in October on the 19th on Saturday at 10 a.m. and that's 05K right here in the cemetery. And the money raised from that pays for the restorations we do the following year in the summer months. Yeah, and if you guys want to, she's got a Facebook page where you can contact her if you want to donate money to her, you know, because they do restore broken uh, tombstones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They take care of these cemeteries. They're very good people, and but they're not, they're, they're non-profit and they need help. So, if you want to donate just a couple bucks, anything to help them. We appreciate it. Right? Thank you. Yep. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. All right, fellow travelers, that's about it for this dedication to these graves here. Now these boys have a final resting place. Maybe they can rest in peace now. You know, it's pretty sad that they died so young, you know. And they didn't have no recognition for years. And it's great company. Play, you know, company here. They're doing a lot of good work. Said so I'll leave their information down for their Facebook and all that. And if you want to contact them, maybe donate a little bit more. They can help. You know, and they keep going to these cemeteries and restoring them. So if you like this video, hit that like button, share, subscribe. Any comments for me? Any comments for appreciating? Any ideas for me to do? Let me know. This is my show. I can do it. So until next time, my fellow travelers, I'll see you around the mitten.